they play a vital role in agriculture. But the work of bees extends far beyond the obvious. As well as pollinating crops and producing liquid honey, hidden within the walls of their hives, bees blend up a unique mix of materials, which scientists believe holds untapped potential in Australia. Propolis is used by the bees because they don't have an immune system. So the bees have to protect themselves and the only way they can do that is by using what's around them. What's around them is nature and it's packed full of things which when put together can have a powerful impact. So bees forage within a seven kilometre radius of the beehive. Um, so that means they cover about 210 square kilometres and they are able to look throughout that 210 square kilometres and search for all little bits of parts of the plants, not just the um, nectar and the pollen. So they might get some of the sap from the spotted gum tree and they might pick up something from underneath where new leaves are being um, grown by a, a weed and they bring that back to the beehive and they can mix it all together and it turns it into uh, a really uh, strong antimicrobial, you know, antifungal, antiviral um, and antibacterial uh, material which they polish their entire hive with. Like Propolis that. is sometimes referred to as bee glue, basically because it's a sticky, resinous so substance. Bees use propolis themselves as both a sterilising agent and a sealant for closing any gaps in their hives. They don't like the light or other predators, ants or spiders come into their hives. So they use propolis as the sticky materials to seal their hives and protect themselves against with other predators. This that's here it. is propolis. And so it's only a small amount, but that's obviously the point. That's why it's so valuable. Yeah, that's right. It's um, a small amount. You only need a small amount, but it's very valuable. But every square millimetre of this hive, um, the bees have covered in propolis. Even these surfaces here that you think are clean and with nothing on them, they'll be covered in a thin film of propolis. And, uh, but for humans also, propolis has much appeal. It's used in many different countries around the world in medicines, dietary supplements and cosmetics. Propolis contains high polyphenolic compounds. Australian propolis is very diverse and it also shows very uh, comparable, even higher antioxidant activities compared with the others well-known propolis in the world. So. Despite being a well-established product elsewhere, here in Australia, propolis is not harvested and processed on a commercial scale. In America, yes. Canada, yes. In uh, Brazil, definitely. And in New Zealand, you know, they do definitely do collect it on a commercial scale, some parts of Europe. But in Australia, we've always mainly been focused on liquid honey production. It's not something that Australians have looked into in a, in a, in a massive way, which is why it's such an exciting opportunity for the industry. Murray Arkadeef has been a beekeeper his entire life. They're not angry, Courtney, so you don't need to worry. I can see you look a bit tense back there. <laughs> his home base is in southeast Queensland, although the nature of his job means he's often anywhere but home. So we run about uh, 1,200 beehives and we work those across a thousand kilometre radius in all the different um, eucalypt forests from desert to the coast. and. Uh, Depending where the rain falls, this great state of Queensland and New South Wales, the other one of New South Wales will keep us good for most of the year. Murray is one of 750 beekeepers who supplies liquid honey to Hive and Wellness Australia, formerly known as Capilano. He says the past 12 months has been a particularly difficult time for the industry right across the country. Beekeepers uh, can no longer rely on liquid honey production to be to remain viable going into the future. The price of honey hasn't fluctuated much over the last 20 years. We're getting on an average about $4.80 today. We were getting $5.50 in 2004. Um, in 2015, we were getting $5.10, and we've had significant price increases. In Australia, recent extreme weather, including prolonged drought, the 2019-2020 bushfires, and last year's devastating flooding has all put immense pressure on beekeepers. There is a real need to find opportunities for diversification and alternative income streams alongside liquid honey production. The 
the continued efforts to contain and hopefully eradicate the varroa mite have also taken a huge toll. We're going through a really um, turbulent time within the industry. A lot of businesses are starting to, you know, even question the viability of, of that with the threat of varroa. We do need to look at alternative revenue streams for beekeepers and working out ways that they can diversify. We've got some challenges on the horizon, there's no doubt about it. And things like propolis will be really required to, like I said, keep that diversification going so that we can keep bees alive for pollinating of crops. This sample is worth Murray's desire to explore opportunities for diversification led him here, to the University of the Sunshine Coast, where a team of researchers is involved in the Australian Propolis Project, an initiative supported by the federal government's AgriFutures organisation. Well, oh, cinnamon, almost. When we started talking to beekeepers about what they were interested in, and they said, well, this Propolis product that they throw up, it's got a lot of value, so how could we use that in some of our research, like everything, if you're throwing something away which you could be making money for, it could be a new source of income. But first, scientists needed to ensure Australian propolis was valuable, given its specific properties were largely unknown. So Hive and Wellness Australia put a call out to its beekeepers nationally to participate in a trial collection of propolis. Samples collected from all different areas around the country were sent here to be analysed. Those samples that came back, I think there was around 55% of those samples that showed high antioxidant uh, components in it, or um, compounds. And so with those compounds, some of those matched, if not were better than uh, you know, other propolis producing countries in the world, such as Brazil, which is your leading propolis producing country. We do have sort of the gold in Australia, I think we can say. And this is the samples collected from Queensland, and this is the premium bro propolis. We found. Dr Trong Tran is, is now leading the research propolis. team that's digging deeper into Australian propolis and trying to unlock more of its mysteries. In particular, the research is focused on finding out which samples, from where exactly, hold the higher antioxidant value and why that may be. Australia has over 80% of native plants. So we can expect that Australian propolis has very unique and different with the other areas in the world. Oh, that's really strong. Yes. And, and so not all propolis is equal. Some is better than others, is that right? That's correct. And it depends on the chemical composition inside the propolis. So that's what you've got to figure out. Where do you get the best propolis from? That's why the chemist needs to be involved. If it's not a stable product where you just get it from one area and it's all the same, some of the propolis I produce has a, a, a really good activity level for helping with those sorts of things, and some of them doesn't. So um, we need to work out what areas produce better propolis in Australia and which don't. Another step on the path to developing a new industry is considering how propolis might be produced in an Australian setting. Already, there have been some challenges along the way. Our industry forefathers have bred so far away from propolising traits. So in other propolis producing countries of the world, such as Brazil, those bees have not had that trait bred out of them. So they are very prolific propolis producers. In Australia, our bees kind of are a little bit too clean, a bit too tidy. And so they don't produce as much propolis as what other areas of the world do. Hive and Wellness has been coordinating a trial using special plastic mats, which fit inside beehives to encourage propolis production. So far though, they're yet to finesse the perfect prototype. We can confirm that that is a way that Australian bees do fill that out and that's a successful way to produce propolis. It's just very cumbersome and difficult for the beekeeper to extract. The work continues to find a more efficient process, but the good news is it's only a small amount of propolis that needs to be harvested per hive. You're talking 100 to 200 grams. You don't produce it by the kilo, so it's not huge amounts of propolis being produced from each hive. It's a small amount, but, you know, it's also a very valuable um, product if you can get it right. We know that Australian propolis has some incredible potential. It's just a case of making more of it.
in terms of how much extra money producing propolis alongside honey might bring in for an Australian beekeeper, it's a little hard to pinpoint. But a 2019 AgriFutures report says that a raw propolis production in a 100 hive enterprise has the potential to add between $900 and $1,400 a year. On those figures, in an operation like Murray's with 1,200 hives, it could bring in as much as $17,000. Commercially at the moment, there's around $20 million um, in products that are currently at shelf. So it's sort of saying, okay, well, we definitely want our beekeepers to have a slice of that pie. It's sort of a little bit what comes first, the chicken or the egg, in that we know it's incredible. We know that there's ways that we could apply it. We're not certain on the volumes that we can get. We're not certain that many beekeepers would take that up as a potential diversification option. For people like Murray, who have built a life and livelihood around bees, anything that helps to keep him in the industry he loves is worth pursuing. I'd like to see it in the next three years, three to five years. I think there is some, from some of the preliminary results that we've seen, there's some real encouraging signs. Quite often in agriculture, you, you might see a blue sky story, but this has been done successfully everywhere else. There's no reason Australia can't do it. We just haven't done it, that's all.